If you want to see how we go from this to this, then keep on watching. I'm Kelly Nascimento with Kelly's Reading Corner, and today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I don't know if you watch beauty gurus on YouTube like I do, but yeah, <laughs> they're some of my favorite channels to watch on YouTube, and I've always enjoyed their chit chat, get ready with me videos. So today we're gonna do it like us from Books and More style and do a chit chat magic paint with me. So I am just gonna talk your ear off while I magic paint a little bit. And so if you're like on the go, out and about while you listen to this, just have a listen. If you're home, cozy up, okay? I'm dressed in a cute lilac, which I heard is trending this fall, hoodie. We're pretending it's not 70 degrees outside. We're pretending it's fall and we're cozy. So I have my magic painting book ready to go. I am going to paint this fun little number here. This is the Unhurry Magic Painting Book. Grab a cup of coffee, hot chocolate, wine, water. Grab some magic painting yourself if you have one. Grab your favorite coloring book. Grab your sketchbook if you're artistic unlike me. Just hang out with me. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of talk about myself. I always find it interesting to hear about someone's past, where they came from, different things that they've done and have been into in their past, like people that I've met as adults. For example, there's this other UBAM consultant that I work with. She's incredibly systematic with her work. Um, everyone that works with her <laughs> appreciates her so much. She creates amazing systems for her business and shares them with us because that's how we roll. She's so good and you know, I just picture her as like a mom book lady, really organized and found out recently that she used to work as a crime scene investigator before having kids. Like crime scene investigator? Like what? <laughs> So hopefully you find some of my life story cool. But either way, whatever you're doing, here's what I want you to do while you're listening. I want you to comment when I say something that you can relate to. So like if you've lived in the same place as me, comment, let me know. If you majored in the same thing as me in college, comment. I wanna see how much we have in common. I think that'll be really cool to kind of learn about each other that way. So let's get started. All right, so Kelly, myself, talking about myself in third person. I was born in the Buffalo, New York area, and that is actually where I live now. I kind of ended up back here after moving around quite a bit. So I have an older brother. He doesn't live close to us right now. You have another brother who's the oldest, but he passed away when he was four days old. So never knew him. Let's see, I grew up very musical. My whole family's musical actually. So my grandparents owned a music store. So I remember growing up, my mom taught um, piano lessons there and uh, worked there and whatever. So, you know, I remember like the store, like mom's going to the store, we're going to the store. I remember like hanging out in the store while like my mom did inventory and I probably like helped, I don't know. So I do have uh, fond memories at the music store that my grandparents owned locally here. But yeah, my mom is a piano teacher. My dad works as what I have always called like a technician. I know he works um, with airplanes. I think he tests parts for airplanes. Anyone else have a parent who you're like, oh, I think they do this. Like you don't really know what they do. Okay, so that yeah, that's my dad. He's always worked that kind of job for the most part. And my mom has always taught piano. We were older, when my grandparents retired, they moved down to Florida because they were golfers. My mom started teaching from our home. So they changed our garage into a whole like mudroom, waiting room, piano studio thing. So, so that's what my parents did and still do. I remember trying softball or whatever when I was like really little. My mom said I stared at the grass more than I watched the game. So that was not my thing. I think I only played that like one season. And then I tried soccer as well. And I remember playing soccer until I was like a preteen and then I quit because I did dance also. I was more into dance. I did dance from when I was like four until like 12. So I really like dancing. It's like my dream to have like a dance TikTok, but I don't have time to learn dances. So there's that. I remember quitting soccer 
I think because I wasn't that good and I was like more into dance. But I think around the same time I ended up quitting dance too because I wanted to start babysitting. Like looking back on it, I kind of regret that. I wish I had danced like all through high school at least, but you know, when you're 12 and you're making your own decisions. <laughs> oh yeah, but also I was very musical. I started playing clarinet when I was in third grade. I took private lessons right away for that. And then in fourth grade, I started taking percussion in school. I think I started taking private percussion lessons in fifth grade. So kind of all around this time, like I was doing a lot of music lessons. I started group voice lessons when I was in fourth grade also. Yeah, I did like tons of music lessons and apparently wanted to get into babysitting, which is interesting because I actually ended up working as a nanny when I was older. So, you know. I kind of knew what was up. I don't know, that's me in a nutshell. I was very musical, I played percussion, I played clarinet, I sang, I did like private lessons pretty much all throughout high school. I was in music festivals, like, oh, and I kind of dabbled in piano with my mom being a piano teacher, it makes sense, right? But I never really, I only took lessons really like a couple years and then I just kind of played. Like I would always play piano in my mom's piano recital even though I wasn't like her student. <laughs> so I can kind of play piano. All throughout high school I would audition for band festivals and I would do like uh, singing festivals where I would like get scored on my singing. So that's kind of what I did all through high school. I was like the music girl. I was in choir, I was in musicals, plays, um, no sports. I remember trying out for volleyball in middle school and I got cut. That was it for me. I'm not the athlete. So I'm the music girl and that was me all through high school. Oh, I was in marching band too. I played snare drum in marching band from 8th grade until 11th grade and then I tried out color guard at one point during that and then I told my band director like, oh I miss being in drumline, can I switch back? And so he let me switch back. I was uh, section leader, like drumline leader all of those years. And then when I was a senior, my back started kind of hurting carrying the snare drum. I mean, I'm like 4'11", okay. I'm very short, like so short that we even had to like cut the bottom of the snare drum harness to like go low enough. <laughs> like that's so short. I decided not to play snare drum that year and I played timpani in the pit my senior year. That was really fun. I liked it because I had, I was like the one that started off one of the songs. Being in theater and music, I was in like dance when I was younger. I was always one to love attention. That was kind of my personality. Like we have some home videos where I'm like, my mom will be like taping other people or other stuff. And I'm like, look at me. Can you see me? Am I in the camera? <laughs> I would, I just loved attention. Always did. Still, still kind of do. So all right, so that was me growing up. Hopefully you've commented some stuff that you relate to already. So, college. We're already into college and I'm still not even halfway through this painting. Maybe what I'll do, let's do a little speed sesh here where you just watch the paint and I'll take a little vocal break and we'll come back when I'm closer to being done with painting and we'll, you know, talk about how Kelly has a little bit more painted. You can tell I am extremely artistic. Okay, so Kelly college years. I had a pretty typical college experience, you could say, as far as just kind of figuring out who I was. I think I was a lot of different people in my college years. Like, 
I just didn't have a clue. Nearing the end of my junior year in high school, I toured a lot of college campuses. My parents have always been very supportive parents, just in general and we went to a lot of different college campuses to check them out. And I was planning on majoring in music, so that's what I was looking at, is everywhere is music departments. I think I was planning on majoring in percussion, so, um, and when I was a senior, I ended up auditioning for the percussion departments of six different colleges, and I ended up choosing to go to Capital University in Columbus, Ohio. I was excited to get out of my hometown. <laughs> I didn't have like a ton of, I didn't really have like any good friends in high school. A lot of my friends were a year older than me in marching band. So they all went off to college and kind of like had their own lives. And so I didn't really have a lot of friends my senior year. I just kind of focused on like music stuff and whatever. I graduated like near the top of my class in the top 10. So I did really well academically and everything. Funny story, I remember being absent a lot my senior year of high school. I don't know, I was just very much doing my thing, like whatever, I skipped a lot of school. I like said I was sick. <laughs> I don't know, that like doesn't match my type A personality at all. So senior year was weird. Okay, so yeah, then I ended up going to Capitol. I can't remember everywhere else I auditioned. I, I know I auditioned at Roosevelt University in Chicago. I think I auditioned at Peabody Conservatory. Was it, is that in Baltimore? I don't remember. But yeah, I auditioned at six schools and I cannot even remember where. Oh, SUNY Potsdam, like in upstate New York. I know I auditioned there because I wanted like a cheap option, but I decided I didn't want to like go study in the middle of nowhere. Capital was cool. Started off in the music department. I joined a sorority my freshman year of college and had a lot of fun. <laughs> I did party in college. I did not party in high school. I was very much like a good girl. I got really into like organizations though. I also co-founded a pro-life group in college with a friend of mine. So we ran that together. I really enjoyed my sorority. I don't know if I like really related to my sorority sisters so much because I was like a music major and so I kind of had like my music thing. You know, I kind of had like these different lives, you know, so it's like I didn't really interact with my sorority sisters as so much on a daily basis besides like organizational things because then I was like practicing and I was in the music building and like nobody else was, you know. But I ended up changing my major one of many times and I think I was, I changed my major a lot. I cannot even remember, so let's not even bother trying to. But I do remember at one point my goal was to pursue a career in, I think I was gonna major in organizational communication maybe. And I wanted to be like a student activities director at a university. I still think I would really like that. Cause yeah, I got really into Greek life and um, like leadership roles through that. So I did switch my major completely out of music. I was in choir the whole time. Oh yeah, I was a voice major in, at Capitol too. Yeah, I knew I wouldn't remember. I can't remember the order of things, like when I switched to voice, when I switched out of music, I, I don't remember. I switched to voice. <laughs> I was a voice major, literally. I spoke with my choir director about what it was like for her becoming like a university level choir director. And so that's what I wanted to do at one point too. I still think that would be cool as well. Yeah, at one point that was my goal. So I was gonna switch back to music, but my scholarship at Capitol didn't go past four years and I would have needed a fifth year by this point because I changed my major so much. So I transferred to SUNY Fredonia, which is in Fredonia, Fredonia, New York, and it's like 45 minutes-ish like south of where I grew up, where I live. And being a state school, it was affordable. So I transferred to there as a voice major, and then I missed percussion and I wanted to switch back to percussion. You can't make this up. So I switch, I auditioned for the percussion studio and I, I made it in and I switched back to percussion. And I, be I believe I was music ed too for like a semester because I definitely took some like child development classes as an ed major, but I'm pretty sure I ended up, wait, no, I ended up, I, <laughs> I was just gonna say I ended up graduating as a performance major, but no, I, I have my bachelor's in music education. So I definitely like student taught and everything. I student taught band, I did some student teaching for band in an elementary school and in a high school. Okay, yeah, so I graduated after six years of college. I graduated from SUNY Fredonia in 2011. Yeah, I graduated high school in 05. Shout out, comment below if 
who graduated high school the same year as me. And then I graduated with my bachelor's in music ed from SUNY Fredonia in 2011. I never really wanted to be a music teacher because even though I loved teaching music, I didn't want to work in a school system um, dealing with like administration and I didn't want to teach kids that didn't want to be there because you know a lot of kids their parents just like make them do band or whatever and that's not fun for music teachers so and I had taught privately out of my parents house like during summers of college I also nannied some summers and probably did both like private lessons like snare drum I was like a classical percussionist I wasn't like a drum set player not like a drummer then <laughs> I decided to go to grad school for percussion, like just performance, okay? So I ended up audition. I don't remember where I auditioned for grad school. I really don't. I think Northwestern in Chicago was one of my potential grad schools. I had been to summer workshops for percussion and for timpani and stuff. Like I was really into all that. Um, man, there's so much I can't remember from my life. It's, it's such a blur. I can tell you I ended up going to grad school as a percussion major at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana, a little bit outside of Indianapolis. So that's what I did. And I wanted to be an orchestral timpanist. Timpani was my favorite. I'll actually, this will be fun. I'll insert a little clip of me playing percussion here so you can see. Okay, so that's me, had like a graduate recital. I had even auditioned for a smaller orchestra in my second year of grad school. I was like, okay, I was pretty good, but I was never great at like sitting in a room and practicing by myself for hours and hours and hours. Like, I that just wasn't, it didn't fit my personality. And it's like, how am I gonna survive in a career where I have to practice by myself in a room for eight hours a day? Like. No, I really struggled to do that and focus and like practice as much as I should have. Although I really loved what I did. It just didn't feel like the lifestyle for me. There was a lot that I learned about like being an orchestral musician and I was like, hmm, I don't know. Oh yeah, and during grad school, just like I guess a little bit about me that's not music related, I got really into eating raw foods. Like, I don't know, has anyone heard of like the raw food movement? It's more than vegan. It's like you literally just eat raw foods. Like you don't eat anything cooked or warmed up or anything. And so I did some like, I was really into raw, I was really into juicing. I would juice every single morning before going to class. Like I would bring my green juice to class. I was really into that. I was also really into drinking a lot of caffeine and pulling all-nighters to do homework and like write papers. <laughs> I was in Brazilian music ensemble. I played the tamborim. That was really, really fun in my grad recital. I'll link below. I think I have a percussion playlist. I don't think I have a playlist for just my grad recital, but there's a Brazilian piece on my recital. You should go check out if you're interested. But isn't that cool? I married, ended up marrying a Brazilian and I was in Brazilian percussion ensemble. So fun. That was one of my favorite ensembles for sure. I played in the pit for a couple operas. I was in band, orchestra. Every year you like audition and they like assign you to an ensemble. So I got to play in a lot of different ensembles there. It was cool. And then just like your typical classical percussion ensemble as well. And then of course you take a bunch of like classical music or other music like related classes so yeah grad school was awesome I was very very busy I remember my second year of grad school I also nannied part-time Tuesdays and Thursdays when I didn't have classes so I worked a little bit as well and I, I did some nannying which like I said I had done summers like earlier as we kind of neared the end of graduate school I knew I didn't want to be an orchestral musician which Yay for me going into tons of student loan debt for that and then deciding not to do it. I think my mom will forever resent me a little bit. <laughs> and I will resent myself because I'm still paying off my loans and I will until I die. Like I said, I had been nannying through school, so it's always something I did like for work. And I 
was on like nanny babysitting websites and I had found a job that was actually really close to where I was living at the time and I loved the house that I had and I loved my roommates at the time and they still both had a year left of grad school. So I would have loved to have just stayed there with all my same friends, the same area, everything and get this job and I didn't get the job. I really thought I was a shoe in for it. I didn't get it. But that kind of led me to continue looking for more nanny jobs. I was searching online for nanny jobs and I ended up in this really weird nanny world. And I was doing like phone and Skype interviews with families like from all over the country looking for jobs. It, it's crazy to me still. So wrapping up grad school, I was like really focused on getting a nanny job and like I was looking at jobs from all over the country. I interviewed and almost took a job in Montana. I interviewed for a job in New Jersey. I can't remember where else, but this family uh, living a little bit outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, um, their mom traveled for work. So she had a ton of like flyer miles or whatever you'd call it. So she ended up flying me out to their house for like a weekend, like in-person kind of interview trial thing. And I just fell in love with their family. Everything felt right. It felt great. And I ended up taking the job there and that was for a live-in nanny position. So post-grad school, I worked as a live-in nanny full-time. If you have any questions about that, feel free to comment because people are always really curious about that. And it was a really good experience. It was a really good experience. I worked so hard for them. I loved their family and I was there for a year and a half. And after being there a year and a half, it just wasn't so good anymore. So that ended. While I was there, I taught some private percussion lessons. I lived on their third floor in just like this giant room basically, had my own bathroom up there. It was so nice. Like I loved so much about this time in my life as well. I taught some private percussion lessons because I had um, accumulated through grad school so many instruments. So I had like my whole little studio set up. It was wonderful, I loved it. I nannied three kids. When I started, they were I think five, eight, and 12. And I was there for a year and a half. While I was there, while I was working full-time as their nanny, kind of house manager role a little bit as well. I, you know, do some organization and set up some systems in their home and stuff. So, and I did their grocery shopping and so that was fun to get into. I helped with laundry, all that kind of stuff. And I also became a kinder music instructor. So I did teach some kinder music lessons for a little bit. That was fun. I didn't really date while I was there. I was just kind of working and doing my thing and I was really involved in their church. So let's like talk about that for a quick set when I was in my undergrad I was very much figuring out who I was and I had attended a few different churches like of friends of mine or whatever and I was always kind of just open to like learning about other religions and stuff then when I was in grad school I actually was getting like really into my Catholic faith and like trying to learn more about that because I had grown up Catholic but not really like knowing much about the church and like what I believed honestly. Then when I got this job, I knew that they were of a different religion because I wasn't allowed to have alcohol or coffee in the home. And so what they were, were members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You might know that as Mormon, although we don't say that anymore. We say like the name of our church now as directed by our prophet. Like I said, I was trying to really like learn more about Catholicism and be a faithful Catholic. And because I sang, I also had often cantered at my church, um, like growing up and different churches and sing for funerals and stuff like that. So I found a Catholic church that I really liked. I tried out several of them and I found one I really liked and I cantered for them, I think. And then after working there and living there for about four weeks, I went to church with the family because I lived with them and was like practically helping raise their kids. So I really wanted to learn more about their faith. So I went to church with them and it immediately sent me on this journey of figuring out what church I felt was the right church and the true church and I mean that could be a whole nother video but actually I do have a lot of videos on my other YouTube channel like my old one 
Um, maybe I'll just link that playlist below. I believe I have a playlist of it. Long story short, I converted and became a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I got baptized while I was living there. So I was really into church stuff while I was there too. I was really into family history work. So I did that at the church a lot. That was a lot of my life while I lived outside of Philadelphia as well. So that kind of leads into the next thing and we're, I'm on my very last spot of painting. So I'm gonna speed the story up while I finish up here. So we are in 2013 when I left my job there. I ended up looking for a nanny job in Utah because you know, all the Mormons live in Utah and I wanted to just see what it was like to live there. So I found a great job there, I felt so right. I just had a phone interview and a Skype interview and I went there. That was a live out position. So I did find somewhere to live. I had a friend there who I met in Philadelphia. She was a nanny of another family in their church. So she helped me find a place and I moved in with a bunch of roommates in Provo and it was so fun. And I was just like loving my nanny job, working 40 to 50 hours a week, four kiddos, house managing for them as well, doing tons of organization projects. Again, grocery shopping, laundry, play dates, driving new activities. It, I was living the single life, loving it. I was dating a ton out there and just like really coming into myself. I feel like, like as a young woman, I just like kind of had stuff figured out. I was loving everything I was doing. Wasn't really playing percussion, doing music stuff anymore. I was a beach body coach. So I was working as a beach body coach. I was really getting into like working out and my health. I don't know, just living the single life. It was so fun. Let's see after that. So that job, similarly to the other one, is kind of, uh, in, at least in my experience, this isn't, this isn't everyone's experience as a nanny, but in my experience, too personal. It's like difficult to work in someone else's home every day and get really close to their kids and get really involved in their lives. And But like, you're not family. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's kind of weird, it's tricky. And so that job ended after about a year and a half as well. And so after that, I was just looking for any nanny job again. And I was looking all over the country again. Um, and I ended up taking a job in Texas that was an interesting job. That was a live-in position. And I only was there for two months. I nannied a 10 year old boy and the mom was a pilot. And so she was gone for like days at a time and then home for days at a time. But they had, um, she had this rule that like I couldn't have anyone over to the house ever. So I was like really isolated there. Like I tried to kind of get into my church, but I couldn't always attend because sometimes I had to be home with the kid on Sundays. And it was a, a weird situation and she didn't really treat me as like a respected employee. So there was weird vibes there. So I actually ended up feeling like, ooh, this is not like the situation I wanna be in. So I gave her like two months notice. Like I literally was like, I will stay as long as you need me to stay. But like, this isn't right for me. So I ended up moving back home. I was like, okay, let's just kind of restart. You know, it's like I had been all over. I changed my major a hundred times and I lived here and there and kind of figuring myself out. And then I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Let me just go home, go back to my parents. I was like, about to turn 30 at the time. I got a nanny job in the Buffalo area at first and then I was like, let me just kind of figure it out, you know? Also at the same time, when I lived in Utah near the end of my time there, like I had met my husband, Ani Harmony. Didn't know he was gonna be my husband at the time, of course, cause he was just like another guy I met on like a dating app. And so we were like talking and Skyping. Again, this could be its whole own story. If you met someone like on a dating app or online, comment below, let me know. I'm sure some of you have, especially lately, it's like the thing. I was talking with him while I was in Texas, was talking with him when I like moved back home and we had already known that he had bought like a plane ticket. He was gonna come visit me here and meet me. He ended up staying in my parents' basement when he came here. Weird, crazy story. We ended up getting engaged like a month and a half after he moved here. He was here for my 31st birthday. We got engaged, we got married two months later after getting engaged, so oh, like really fast. So we moved into an apartment, which is the apartment we live in now. We've been there for over four years. Got pregnant on our honeymoon, worked through pregnancy as a nanny, but then quit uh, well, they just needed a summer nanny. So then I stopped that job and just worked as a Beachbody coach, had Connor. That's a whole story in itself as well, of course. 
Connor was born at 34 weeks. We had no pregnancy complications, but just he came super early. We had a short NICU stay. If you've been watching some of my videos, you kind of know how we got into Usborne Books and why I'll link the videos below and we'll put cards up here too to show. I already made videos to talk about why I became an Usborne Books and More consultant and left Beachbody, how that happened and why I did it. So you can check those out if you wanna know. We're kind of fast forwarding this whole time my husband's like working on his green card he got his green card kind of like that same time like both like September 2018 no he got his green card September 2017 while I was pregnant so he started working so he was working like factory job so when Connor was one and a half I found like a random job opportunity to work part-time as a house manager but I loved the house managing side of things like organizing and helping run the home and so when this opportunity came up I took it because I also struggled with postpartum depression forever. Like for like the first, like when Connor, until he was like two, like it really helped me to have a job and get out of the house and kind of have time to myself. Right around the same time, he was getting into some early intervention therapies from home. So if you know any of my story with Connor's autism diagnosis, this was kind of all happening around the same time. I was working part-time. I kind of worked my way into full-time at this position. Uh, I was a really hard worker. I I was overworked, but I was, I'm also like naturally an overachiever. So I'm like, yeah, let me do this. Oh, I can do this too, I'll do this. And so I really stepped into this like major house manager role working full time. And I was trying to juggle my Usborne books and more business. And we were having Connor in like a bunch of therapies. This is also pandemic time, like right after Connor turned two, was when the pandemic started. So, but I kept my job because she needed people to run her household and watch her kids. So that job, let's see, I ended that job after a year and a half, I think I was there because I just, it was too stressful. I was burnt out. And so I ended up quitting and turning Osborne Books and More into my like kind of full-time business. And wow, that <laughs> seems like so crazy and jumbled. But like, if you've been following me for a little bit, you kind of know my more like recent story, I suppose. So, I mean, that's where we are now. Connor's three, he has his autism diagnosis, he's in preschool, he has tons of therapies, he's my whole life. So I love that my job now is flexible. I really need ultimate freedom to like prioritize my family and Connor. That's my life story, I guess. Comment below if you haven't yet. Anything that you found that we had in common? Have you lived in Texas, Utah? Are you Catholic? Are you a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Are you really into music? Do you love classical music? I listen to classical music on the radio. <laughs> It's pretty rare that I actually listen to like other radio stations besides classical in the car Unless I'm listening to Lori Berkner with Connor. He loves Lori Berkner I'm so excited to read the comments and see what we have in common Sorry, I had to wrap up really fast at the end there But if there's anything that you kind of want me to dive into more, I would be so happy to do that We can do like a a chit chat color with me video. <laughs> so here is the finished product of the painting. It's so pretty, isn't it? I really, really like it. Oh, and it was really nice to like sit for a video too and just like chit chat. That was so nice. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. If you did enjoy it, give this video a like and make sure you subscribe to my channel. Um, if you didn't know, 99% of the people that view my videos are not subscribed. So if you are enjoying my content, make sure you subscribe because it helps my channel. And if you're subscribed and you flip on the notification bell, you'll get notified every single time I post a new upload. And I do upload flip through videos every single day and a longer format video like this about once a week. So you definitely wanna make sure that you don't miss them. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you later.